Sarah Lancaster, an assistant professor and extension specialist at Kansas State University. Today, we're going to talk about grass identification. Grass ID is one of those things that can be kind of challenging because at first glance, all grasses look pretty similar. They all have long, uh, narrow leaf blades with parallel veins and, and they can just look really similar. But we're gonna step through some things um, that I hope will help you feel more comfortable identifying grassy weeds in the future. So the first thing we need to look at are some general characteristics of grasses. So for example, as you start the process of identifying any plant, but in this case grasses, it's important to think about the habitat. And I've got a photo here on this slide of reed canary grass, which is a, a plant that you're only likely to find in areas associated with water or saturated soils or very moist soils. So if you're on a, an upland slope, you're not going to consider that as an example of a plant that you, you might be looking at. Another sort of general characteristic of the grass plant to consider would be the growth habit. So there are two main types of growth habits that you need to think about when you think about identifying grasses. The first would be creeping. And so these are gonna be grasses that have some mechanism to spread across the surface of the ground. So often they would have runners or stolons or rhizomes adventitious roots of some sort. Uh, the other type of growth habit that you need to be on the lookout for with grasses is a bunch type growth habit. So these plants are going to have um, a crown that is, is compact and contained, and that plant is going to, um, if it's a perennial, going to regrow from that particular bunch um, every year. Now getting down into the specifics of a grass plant, one of the key places to look when you're identifying a grass is the area that we call the collar region. So if you think about a grass stem um, and the grass leaves, the collar region is where those two pieces of the plant come together. So uh, looking at the illustration here, kind of working from the bottom up, you have the leaf sheath, which is the portion of the blade that wraps around that stem. Um, there are various uh, forms of leaf sheaths um, they can be overlapping, they can be very close together. Um, we're going to look at some foxtails here in a little bit that have hairs along the margins of that leaf sheath. So that's an important, uh, an important place to look. Another place that is important, or another feature that is important to look for are the oracles. And these are basically just little, I call them sort of like fingers that wrap around uh, the stem at that collar region. Some folks, I've heard them are referred to, they look like little ears on the side of the, the um, grass stem there, but they're just little, little appendages that kind of grab around that stem at the top of the sheath. Another feature to be on the lookout for is the ligule. Um, ligules can have various forms, and we're going to look at those in the next slide here in just a minute, but in general, a ligule is just a membrane um, that is found on the inside um, of that leaf near the stem. And then the most obvious thing is going to be the leaf blade. So we're going to look for things like uh, prominent veins, the presence of hairs, the location of hairs, the type of hairs. Um, you can look at some plants have uh, very distinct serrations along the edges and you have to get pretty close to see those. Um, but those are the main places you're going to look as you start to distinguish among grass species. So here are those examples of an oracle and some ligules. So this first uh, photo here, we're looking at the oracles on quack grass. Okay, so that arrow is pointing to a very small little just appendage there that's going to wrap around that stem. Sometimes those oracles can be clasping and come all the way across. Sometimes they're, they're long. Sometimes they're like on fescue, they're just little short uh, kind of nubs there. Like going around clockwise, uh, the top right, you're looking at a stink grass ligule there. See how it's very hairy. You can see the hairs um, poking up there um, at the bottom of that leaf blade. Uh, then moving back to the left on the bottom row, um, that is an example of a ligule in downy brome. So a couple of things to see there. One would be the abundant hairs on those leaves. But the feature I want you to pay the most attention to here is that big, tall, that's a membranous ligule there. It looks just kind of like a little piece of skin um, at the bottom of that leaf. 
And then there's one uh, graph in particular that we think about is its identifying feature is that it doesn't have any identifying features in the collar region, and that's barnyard grass, which is the, the plant that's shown there on the bottom right of the, the slide here. Um, so there is no ligule, there are no oracles, there are no hairs um, on that plant to look for. So that's kind of its identifying feature is that there's none of those identifying features. We also need to think about the flowers on a grass plant. When we think about flowers, we often think about things like roses or sunflowers that have these very big, beautiful, conspicuous um, flowers or inflorescences. Okay, so an inflorescence is just a group of flowers and grasses are going to have inflorescences or groups of flowers. So um, I've got a photograph of a, a foxtail plant here on the left of this screen, and you can actually see the little little male components of all of those little flowers um, sticking out of that seed. So the stamen are, are poking out of that foxtail head there. Um, you know, every place you see one of those little stamen poking out, that's gonna turn into a seed. So if each seed comes from a flower, which is turned a spikelet in a grass, um, and those spikelets combine to form an inflorescence. So we've got two types of inflorescences that are pretty common in the grasses. One, um, as in the case of um, the foxtail, you know, it looks like a head. Uh, we also think about wheat or rye as having heads. Um, you know, and technically, in some ways, this foxtail head is a very compressed panicle. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it looks like a spike. Um, and then the other type here, this would be truly a panicle. So you've got these branches. Um, of various spikelets on this barnyard grass um, inflorescence here. So we've got spikes and we've got um, panicles for our two main types of flowers. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys some terminology here um, as we, we move forward because we're going to use these terms to look at some examples of some common uh, grass species that you might need to identify across the north central region of the U.S. So I've got them broken down into pairs that might be sort of easily confused or difficult to distinguish um, for various reasons. And we're gonna go from easy to distinguish to harder to distinguish. So I've got three sets here to look at in the next few minutes. This first set is crabgrass and goosegrass. Both of these are warm season annual plants and both of them have um, inflorescences that are panicles. So at first glance, as you're learning grass identification, you might confuse them. Some key things to think about as you try to separate them apart. Uh, one would be to look at the shape of the stem. Crabgrass is going to have a round stem, whereas goosegrass is going to have a flat stem. We can also look at the growth habit of the plants. Crabgrass grows prostrate. It tends to grow kind of flatter to the, gr um, flatter to the ground, but it's going to root at the nose and spread out. Goosegrass is more of a bunch grass. It also will grow flat to the ground, um, especially if it's in, it's a common one to see in like ditches and yards and stuff that are mowed. So it'll be very flat in those situations. But one of the things that you can look for there is a, a white region uh, near the center of the plant. It kind of looks like a wagon wheel is how I've always described it to students. Um, other things to think about here would be uh, differences in the, the leaves and the sheaths. Um, both have hairs. Crabgrass has very, very hairy leaves, uh, very, very hairy sheaths, whereas goosegrass tends to have more um, kind of wispy hairs and not as many of them um, as crabgrass. And we'll look at some photos comparing that here in just a minute. Um, you can also compare the ligules in crabgrass. You have a, a fairly large membranous ligule, whereas goosegrass has a fringed membrane ligule, so it looks a little bit like a hairy ligule. And then the last item here to compare would be the number of, of branches within the panicle. So crabgrass is going to have what looks to be like four to six different spikes, whereas goosegrass has a greater variety there. Um, the ID guides say one to 13, but usually it's in that, it's also usually in that kind of four to six or seven uh, range there. So here's an example of those different growth habits. Um, here's that crabgrass. Um, taking off and trying to spread out and grow, um, grow via those uh, branches or stems that are going to have adventitious roots um, at those nodes. And then goosegrass is here on the right. 
And you can start to see that the inside of that uh, plant is a lighter color. So um, if that plant were flat in, in a, a lawn setting or a, a mowed setting, it would be very obvious that the inside um, at the base of those uh, stems is, is lighter in color. These are some photos of the collar region of these two plants. On the left, we have crabgrass. On the right, we have goosegrass. So you can see um, the, the more abundant hairs going down the sheath here of the crabgrass, um, the more abundant hairs on both surfaces of the leaf there. And then we have that relatively large membranous ligule um, on the crabgrass. For goosegrass, you can see that fringed membrane. So you can actually almost see where the fringes end in this particular photo. And then just a few long wispy hairs there um, on the sheath and on the leaf of that plant. To compare the inflorescences, the crabgrass is going to have um, thinner, more elongated looking um, spikes within the panicle or, or branches within the panicle. Something else kind of interesting about the crabgrass is that that middle stem, it's called a rachis, kind of zigzags back and forth between the individual seeds there. So you can also use that um, as an indicator. And then if you look at the goosegrass on the right, um, you can see the three um, branches there at the top and then the one branch that's down below, that's very common um, to see in the goosegrass. And you can see there that those individual branches are just more robust um, than the uh, branches within the crabgrass panicle. All right, foxtails. Uh, foxtails um, in general are pretty easy to recognize once they have started to flower. They have that nice um, spike or super compressed panicle, um, depending upon how technical you want to be, um, to look at there. So there's three primary foxtail species found throughout the north central region that we're going to look at. There's giant foxtail, green foxtail, and yellow foxtail. Okay, all of these are warm season annual plants. All of these are going to have a ligule that is a fringe of hairs or a hairy ligule. Okay, so let's start at the top of the, the Venn diagram there with the giant foxtail. The tail for giant foxtail is a hairy upper leaf surface. So hairy ligule, hairy upper leaf surface, and also look for a sheath margin that is hairy. Um, that will tell you that you have giant foxtail. Now that hairy sheath margin can also be associated with green foxtail. So if you have a hairy sheath margin and no hairs on the leaf, you've got green foxtail, okay? Green foxtail tends to be um, not as large as giant foxtail if they were to be side by side. Um, and it also has fewer uh, spikelets within that inflorescence. And so um, the, the overall appearance is just not as, as compressed or not as uh, compacted as what we see with giant or yellow foxtail. And then the last of these three species is yellow foxtail. Um, this is the only foxtail species that we're looking at here that has a flat stem. The other two have a round stem. And yellow foxtail has long kind of wispy hairs at the base of the leaf. So we'll look at that in just a minute. So we're looking here at some photos with some of the key identifying characteristics of the three foxtail species. So starting with the giant foxtail examples at the top, uh, we have uh, that hairy ligule right here um, that you can see. And you can see it again in this photo in the center, but what I want you to see is the hairs along the margin of the sheath. I'm going down my hand there. And then on the left of that center, I'm sorry, the right side of that center photo, you can see um, the hairs on the upper surface of that leaf. The bottom left photo is a photo of green foxtail. And the example here is just looking at the fact that there are no hairs on the leaf. And there are just a few hairs along the um, margin of the sheath there. The last photo is yellow foxtail. Again, it's the one foxtail that has a flat stem. It has a, a hairy ligule and it has those long wispy hairs at the base of the leaf. You're not going to see hairs um, a lot of other places on the plant like you can with goosegrass. All right, here's our last pair here. Um, this is one of the most difficult uh, pairs of plants to tell apart. Um, Johnson grass and shatter cane. So they are very, very closely related. Um, they are both warm season plants. 
They both have hairless leaves. They both have very prominent white mid veins and they both have a ligule that is a fringed membrane, which we'll look at here in a moment. Um, key differences. Johnson grass is a perennial and shatter cane is an annual. So if you have a mature plant in Johnson grass, you're going to start to see development of those thick scaly rhizomes. Whereas with shatter cane, uh, when they're seedlings, you can actually carefully pull that shatter cane plant out of the ground and the seed that is very dark and rounder than a Johnson grass seed, um, Johnson grass seed is going to be more football shaped, whereas the shatter cane is going to be rounder. You can actually look for that seed to be still attached to that like two to th two leaf seedling or so when they're very, very small. Um, they're very difficult to tell apart. So talking about inflorescences, the last difference to look at would be differences in the inflorescence. And so Johnson grass we mentioned is going to have those um, kind of flatter but more football shaped seeds and a more open panicle, whereas shatter cane is going to look uh, more like a grain sorghum. It's actually the same genus and species as a grain sorghum. So it's going to have little rounder seeds, um, often darker um, in color than the Johnson grass. So taking a look at some photos, both of these plants are going to have this very prominent white mid vein um, that you can see in the picture on the upper left of this slide. Um, and you can see the fringed membranous ligule in the photo here on the right, um, upper right. And then the photo on the center bottom of this slide would be an example of some Johnson grass growing from rhizomes. Uh, so funny story about this picture. Um, this was from an experiment that was conducted here at K-State. And they actually thought that they had excavated all of their rhizomes from this particular area. So they excavated the rhizomes in the fall and then I got a call in the spring to come out and take a look. They couldn't believe that this was actually Johnson grass growing back from these rhizomes, these very small rhizomes that they had missed. So it just gives you an idea of how aggressive um, and how difficult to control this plant really is. And then here's that side by side um, of the inflorescences of the two plants. So you've got Johnson grass on the left and shatter cane on the right. So you can see the more open panicle of the Johnson grass, the more elongated seeds, and then in the shatter cane, the darker, rounder um, seeds and a more compact panicle there. So those are the things that I wanted to share with you guys to, uh, today about identifying grasses. Um, I hope that they were helpful and feel free to reach out if you have any questions or um, other comments about the presentation. Thanks so much for your time. Mm -hmm.